Hey guys, I'm in the garage today. I'm gonna to put together a quick little video about what I think is everybody's most common question when it comes to their R50, which is how do I lift it and what stuff do I lift it with? So here's a quick little explanation on that. All right, so let's go over our lift kit options. So with lift kits, we have two methods. We have springs, you can put a stiffer spring on your Pathfinder, or you can put a spacer in between, well, so on the front, you put a spacer on top of the strut, or in the rear, you put a spacer in between the coil and the coil bucket. Uh, we'll start with springs here. So springs, there are only two brands in the United States that sell um, lift springs for Pathfinders. The first one is 4x4parts.com, which on the internet is most commonly referred to by their name Automotive Customizers or AC for short. If you hear someone talk about AC springs, this is what they're talking about, stuff that they bought on 4x4parts.com. So the springs, the in-house brand that 4x4parts.com sells is their two inch coil lift springs. Two inch lift coils, okay? They also sell Old Man Emu springs, except they mask the brand name of them. So if you're gonna buy anything off 4x4parts, only buy the AC two inch lift coils. Um, the Old Man Emu are cheaper other places and it's less confusing what you're buying. So I have these, some people complain about the ride quality with AC springs. I think they ride fine, don't have any complaints, especially if you air down, they're totally fine springs. That being said, Old Man Emu, as of right now, is probably the more popular option um, there's a lot of guys who run them in Washington, uh, California, that I can think of. Um, pretty popular spring option. And so for the front suspension, they make three different springs. So for the front, they have a light duty, uh, medium duty, and a heavy duty coil spring option. And they are designed for different uh, load ratings. So. For example, now they have, they put numbers to it, but I think it works something like little to no lift height is what this one's rated for. Front bumper, front bumper and winch. And they're designed to, if you pair these springs with the load that they're rated for, they're designed to give excellent ride quality and lift somewhere around a half inch over stock, which is a little different than the 4x4parts.com springs which are designed with a specific lift height as to, opposed to a specific ride quality with a given load. That being said, how most people use the Old Man Emu springs is they buy a heavy duty spring for the front and then what they do is they put those in and they get initially almost two inches of lift. Uh, it's pretty common, you put these in, you have no bumper, you have no winch and you get almost two inches of lift. And then over time, these HD, these heavy duty springs, they'll settle and you'll get somewhere between one inch and one and a half inches of lift. Um, one of my uh, closest R50 friends has Old Man Emu heavy duty springs that are about two years old and they lift about one and one quarter inch. Um, and so most people will buy those heavy duty springs. They will put them in, let them settle and then they'll end up putting a one inch spacer on top of them so that they still get that two inch lift height. So the two methods that rely primarily on springs, we're gonna get about two inches of lift unless you're looking to get, I don't know, put a light duty on and get a half inch lift. If you want that, that's totally cool. That's what you're looking for. But the two most popular routes end up giving you a two inch lift. Spacers being the third most popular route, or the third most common, one of the three most common routes, uh, have a lot of different lift heights available. You'll see them offering one inch, one and a half inch, two inch, and two and a half inch. I don't think anyone makes a half inch spacer yet. Um, you could shave one down. If you bought one and shaved it down, that'd work. But these are what you'll find available for sale. 
Um, two companies I see the most of, eBay, I think, and Amazon, Supreme Suspension. Um, I think it's a fine brand, but if you're gonna get a space lift, I recommend going with SF Creation. He is an Enpora member, uh, which if you haven't joined, join it right now. Awesome community, lots of great info. Um, anything you can think of with your Pathfinder, they've covered it. But he, great guy, great product, easy to work with. That's the space lift I initially had, and that's what I recommend you buy. Um, support someone else who has the same passion for Pathfinders. So, the real reason that uh, space lifts exist is because they are cheaper than a spring lift in the front. The rear is pretty similar price-wise, um, but the front noticeable difference in cost between a spring lift and a spacer lift. Spacers might only run you um, less than 100 bucks. Four by four part springs are 250 once they've been shipped and Old Man Emu are 167 um, as of right now. Uh, so definitely cheaper to get a spacer lift. Uh, you can get an entire spacer lift package. I did it, I got a two and a half inch in the front, three inch in the rear for like 150 bucks shipped. Um, which is less than the Old Man Emu Springs just for the front. Um, but, though you can achieve the same lift heights, these are not equivalent options, in my opinion. Um, and so let's explain now how a strut works. So, a strut has a fixed mount here. This is attached to the body. This is the top. It's fixed to the body. This mount does not move. You put the coil spring in it, but then you have a lower mount, and this lower mount can move. So if I put a tire in the air, this lower mount will eventually drop all the way to maximum extension. So now the spring has pushed this mount away, as far away from the body as possible. So you end up with a tire that's all the way pushed all the way down because it's in the air and there's no weight on the side of the suspension. If you were to jump your car though and you had extra load, the strut might compress, this mount right here would compress the spring and go upwards and your tires would get stuffed into your wheel well. Um, and then so we can lift this strut. Let's say here's my side with the spring right here. So this is our ride height, or this is our perch height at ride height. And we take a spring, we put a stiffer spring in it, and we move this perch down two inches. So now our perch sits right here, and it's been pushed further away from the body. But the maximum uh, uh, extension on the strut is still the same. The strut is still designed to stop down here. Now, this perch sits closer to maximum extension, but ultimately it still stops at the same point. It just sits here and can still go up to here if you compress it enough. So that's cool. We get the same suspension and geometry angles. We just ride ride height on pavement at a slightly taller lift height. But spacer lifts don't exactly work the same. So when we put a spacer lift, we put a spacer between the fixed mount, we put it between the body and between the top of the strut. So now we ride two inches lower, right? This perch relative to the body, this perch is moved from here to here. But what is also moved is this maximum compression relative to the body because there's a spacer here. So now we have a strut assembly that is something more like this. This perch can go up to here or it can go down to here. So ride it here, but this perch, the maximum extension, the maximum distance of the lower perch from the body mount is now maybe two inches lower with a two inch, well, one and a half inch base at least two inches. Um, and so, that's a little bit different. 
And to explain the full difference, we're gonna look at an actual diagram of the front suspension. So this is how the front suspension of a four-wheel drive R50 Pathfinder looks. We have our strut, which is attached to the spindle, and or spindle, the hub, right here. CV axle goes through the hub, and then we have a control arm, ball joint, which attaches to the hub spindle area. Um, and if you're a two-wheel drive Pathfinder, you don't have CV axles, and this discussion isn't going to apply to you quite as much. Um, so let's say here's our strut. It's got a fixed body mount right here. It has a perch and it can extend all the way down here. Now, if we push this down, this entire hub assembly goes down, right? That's why when you lift it at right height, you can fit bigger tires because this entire hub assembly has been moved down two inches. So we can fit a slightly bigger tire at right height. Um, but that also means that this CV axle angle, which I'll extend through the hub for you, at ride height, it's gonna ride at a slightly steeper angle, and then at maximum compression, it's going to reach this angle. Now, you put a tire in the air, no matter what spring you have in this strut, if you put a tire in the air, it reaches this line of maximum extension, and the CV axle reaches its maximum angle, and the strut stops it from going down any further. That's great. But now let's imagine that we've moved this entire strut assembly and the entire travel of the strut, we've moved it down. So now the strut perch moves down to here, the body mounts down here. And that means instead when we put a tire in the air, our CV axle is gonna go at this angle. And it's no longer in the spec, in the array of angles that it was designed for. This, this axle's at an angle that it wasn't designed for. The spacer lift has moved the strut assembly down and we've got a tire in the air and so now our CV axle is at this angle that it wasn't designed for. As opposed to a spring lift which kept all of the CV axle, the CV axle in somewhere in the set of possible angles but it never exceeded this maximum angle, but we put a spacer on it and now we achieved this new angle. So what this means is when we're in four wheel drive and we're stepping on the gas and we've got our spacer lifted pathfinder, and we're trying to climb this hill and you turn the wheels all the way to the right, step on the throttle and you hear clunk, 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 clunk from that CV axle because not only has it dropped down to an angle that it wasn't designed for, it's also trying to, at that angle, uh, deliver power to the wheels. And now you've got it maybe turned all the way over to the right. And so it's at its weakest point because it's stretched out um, the axle, the, you know, the hub points this way. So the axle has got to move that way. And it's already at too steep of an angle compared to what it was designed for, and now your CV axle joint explodes because it can't transfer power at that angle, and so it grenades itself. Whereas if we had had a spring lift, we would put a tire in the air, the strut perch would drop all the way down here, the CV axle would hit the max angle that it was designed for, and as long as we didn't do anything stupid, like the, the axle would still be fine. It's possible to break an axle on any lift kit, but spring lifts don't incur extra risk. Uh, if you put a spacer lift, you are making it possible to grenade a CV axle just by putting a tire in the air. Um, you're, in a sense, if you're really gonna try some serious off-roading where tires are gonna be lifted in the air, you're making your vehicle less capable. A Pathfinder with two grenaded CV axles isn't going anywhere that a standard four-wheel drive working Pathfinder can go. Um, you're now a rear-wheel drive Pathfinder because you blew up both your CV axles.
So now, remember, I mentioned that OME setup with a one inch spacer, right? That's a pretty safe setup. It's hard to blow up an axle on a one inch spacer. If you drop the spacer, or if you drop the strut perch down just an extra inch below what it was designed to do, and you drop that CV axle just a little bit lower than the angle is designed for, that's a pretty safe lift. I don't think I've heard of anybody blowing up a CV axle on the OME and one inch lift. Um, OME and one inch spacer lift. Still pretty safe. Uh, my buddy damaged his CV axle, but he was also going at it pretty hard. So I don't think I can blame that necessarily on the one inch spacer. Now the reason you don't see an AC lift and a one inch spacer is because we start to run into problems with alignment. So this strut attaches to the spindle at these two bolt heads. And now if you lift it, see this isn't straight up and down, right? So this pushes here and there. So now we have an alignment issue. So you might have to use camber bolts to move these things back into alignment. Um, if you put an AC spring, if you lift it two inches and then lift it another inches, the difference here, it might not be alignable. So that's why you don't see that lift combination very often. And that's another reason why two inch is about the maximum lift because it's about the maximum lift that you can align, not even mentioning any CV axle issues that you might run into. So here's just the basics to keep in mind with our lift kit. Springless are inherently a safe way to lift your Pathfinder. If you want to go off road and you want to have reliable suspension, you want to have your drivetrain still reliable, you get a spring lift. You'll never put your axles at risk just by putting the suspension at full droop. Now, something to remember is if you want to be have a vehicle that you can align. Two to two and a half inches is about the maximum that your vehicle can take for alignment. Some people get lucky, they can align a three inch lift. I don't know why it doesn't work for everyone not a suspension expert. I've just been around this enough to know the basics. But if you want to align it, stay to two and a two and a half inches and you shouldn't have too many troubles with alignment, especially if you get camber bolts. If you need cheap and you're not going off road, you may be willing to settle for a spacer lift. But I'm gonna warn you that I think spring lifts ride better all around. You don't have as much body roll because the springs are stiffer. You put a spacer on top of a stock spring, your vehicle center of gravity is now higher, but the springs aren't stiffer to help uh, compensate for that. So you're gonna experience probably more body roll around turns if you put a spacer lift as opposed to a spring lift. Um, and also new shocks and struts will help minimize body roll. As well as, here's another term for you all, if you're going to lift your Pathfinder, do not forget to add a missing link. I will put a link down in the thread, down in the comments about missing links. I'll probably do a video at them at some point, but for now I'm gonna put a link down there. If you're gonna lift your Pathfinder, highly recommend the missing link, and I highly recommend manual hubs. I will also put a link down there below for manual hubs that you can buy and for manual hubs, uh, how they work. Basically, they disconnect your CV axles so that they aren't rotating so that your CV axles last longer. You're in two wheel drive, disconnect the CV axles. These don't move anymore and your boots don't get torn as quickly just because you're driving down the highway. Normal Pathfinder. The hub is always engaged and connected to the CV axle, so just your front tires rotating for moving forward also rotates the CV axle. Use a manual hub, disconnect the CV axles, and now only your tire spins without spinning your CV axles. But anyway, like I said, spring lifts are safe, they ride good, and they're by and large my favorite way to lift your Pathfinder, especially in the front, they'll drive great, 
they're dependable, and they're predictable. They're, you can always align a spring lift. Spacer lifts are cheap. I don't really think they're good for off-roading, like real off-roading. Like you wanna drive down a dirt road, fine, put on some spacers, but if you are going to be putting front tires in the air, I think it's a little too risky. Um, it sucks to get stranded because you blew up a CV axle. You have to change a CV axle in the middle of a trail. Not fun. Um, and you go up to that two and a half inch spacer, you might come into problems with alignment. Even on my two and a half inch spacer, if I turn the wheels all the way to the right in the parking lot in two wheel drive, I'd get clunks sometimes. Really annoying. Spring lift, I've never experienced CV clunk. But anyway, those are your R50 lift kit basics. Thanks for tuning in, um, and best of luck lifting your Pathfinder. They're a great vehicle, and I hope you have fun with them. Have a good one.